All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about my EDC for Anchorage, Alaska. Now, I've been living here for a little while and getting settled in, so I really haven't had an opportunity, a good opportunity to make an EDC video, but today we are going to be changing that because I'm going to be doing my EDC update for life down here. Now, I think it's really important to note, like, you know, in Alaska, it's a different area, but I feel like there are a lot of similarities. So I'm gonna be breaking some, you know, unique things down and talking about my EDC as a whole in this video. So without any further ado, guys, let's jump right into it. So <clears throat> let's go over some of the more boring aspects first to get them out of the way. All right, so first thing up, we have is a wallet. Now, I think generally, regardless to where you live, you need a good wallet. This one is an open seas leather, and this one is their top sider. This one's the quick draw with the um, cards in the back here, and so you're gonna keep some IDs back there. And then, like I said, this is just a open seas leather, uh, leather quick draw wallet. Nothing too fancy, too special here, but you guys know I love my open sea leathers or open seas leather wallets, and I think especially Hawaii being where they're at now if you feel like supporting them it would be a good idea to do so all right other things that are kind of boring we have the Zippo lighter. Now the Zippo lighter is one of those interesting things because I do not smoke and I don't necessarily encourage smoking, but I do carry this guy, particularly for in the event if you need to start a fire in a pinch. It's one of those things that's very handy to have for kind of survival situations. And of course, you know, you have like the truck survival knife and stuff like that, but it's always nice to have a kind of backup or a quick handy little way of starting fires if you need to in your pocket. So there is that, and you know, occasionally if your friend needs a light it's uh nice to be able to be the friend that is always prepared all right now let's get into some of the more interesting things here so first up we have the tech so the tech is kind of two-sided we have the phone which we'll talk about in just a second here we have the phone which i'll talk about in just a second here but first off we have the watch now this is my apple watch ultra and to be fair and like to be honest i don't know if i necessarily love the apple watch ultra it you know it definitely has some room for improvements in my opinion and you know it does have the longest and best battery life of any of the apple watches out there but still does fall short of garmin's and other companies that make um smart watches out there now to be fair and i think what is worth noting to the credit of the apple watch is unlike a lot of the garmin and other such you know watchmakers out there um or smart watch makers out there i should say the apple watch is more of a multi-tool so i do feel like it has a lot of extra functionality to it there's a lot of things that this will do with that a lot of smart watches can't do so you know for instance this is or you can use this literally to purchase things if you have an apple card or your apple wallet set up through it so there's some functionality like that that this watch has intrinsically that a lot of other watches don't so that is my apple watch and it should be noted i'm also running a speedgen um, loop on here just because the factory band that i had for this was the alpine loop and the loops uh, in the alpine loop band were starting to wear out so i went over to the speedgen one and it's basically like their solo loops for apple watch you basically just have this large elasticated loop and you know you just slip it onto your hand like such I do really like this uh, personally because I work in surgery. And so for me in surgery, um, obviously when I go in as a sterile member, I can't be wearing a watch, but when I'm not in surgery specifically, I do like to wear my watch. So I like having that um, watch band because it makes it really easy to take my watch on and off because that will happen. Like it will happen three or four times a day where I'm taking my watch on and off. So I like being able to um, do that and it just makes it more seamless for me. Anyways, moving on, we have the pen. This is still for me, the precision pen um, or smooth precision pen, sorry. And this is just one of their more basic tie bolt pens. And it's just a titanium, you know, smooth finished uh, bolt action pen from smooth precision. I like it. it does what it needs to do it's a good pen and uh most importantly i think it's pretty darn lightweight so yeah pretty cool 
Next one up, we have the Phoenix LD30. I have tried to replace this with other Phoenix lights, but for now, the LD30 is probably still my go-to. It emits a whopping 1600 lumens on high, but yet is still hand-sized. So it is an incredibly bright flashlight and it just works. Like I really, uh, for the size, to weight and power ratio, it is super hard to beat. I mean, are there other things on the market that do a better job? Yes, but it just works really well for me. Before we forget it too, it's also worth mentioning the phone. This is an Apple, um, <clears throat> Apple Pro Max 12 or Apple iPhone 12 Pro Max, I should say, I think that's the technical term for it. Um, and it is in an OtterBox Defender. So nothing super new uh, on that phone front, but it just works. It's a functional phone. The blue is kind of a nice touch to it, but yeah. So it's just an Apple iPhone 12 Pro Max. Okay, moving down to knife. Now knife, of course, I usually showcase one knife in these EDCs, but as you guys probably know, I am a knife collector, so I have lots of knives. It's not just this one, but I will say here in Anchorage, you know, um, this is pretty, pretty civilized as far as at least the actual city goes. So that's kind of what this is about is like my average city carry and so, when it comes to city life, you know, I'm not going to necessarily be carrying something like a Cold Steel 4 Max Scout. So something like this Benchmade Osborne 940 is something that works really well for me. This one's super well broken in, as you can see, very, very, very smooth. And uh, I've tuned it up, of course, sharpened it, put a new edge on it. And fortunately, it's still pretty rough. I mean, the edge itself is actually very sharp, but the... Uh, so it is a user and abuser, and it is just overall really solid knife. Um, no real complaints there. Next up is the multi-tool, and usually I do carry a knife and a multi-tool. I know this kind of confuses people sometimes because some people, you know, they see a you know knife or a multi-tool and they think of it kind of as the same tool, but genuinely when it comes down to it, I think of knives and multi-tools, even though most multi-tools have knives, I think of them as kind of mutually exclusive because there's a lot of things that a multi-tool will do that a knife won't. So I do usually carry a multi-tool and once again, uh, it's usually going to be the Charge Plus G10 version. So this guy that you see here is almost always the multi-tool of choice for me. And that's just simply because uh, it works very well for me. The tool set for the Charge Plus works well for me as well. It's very conducive to what I actually need and want in a multi-tool. And I think for me, the Charge series of multi-tools, while not cheap, are pretty much the um, kind of Goldilocks multi-tool for me. It has all of the core tools that I need, but in a package that is, you know, about the same length as a knife. A little bit wider and of course a little bit thicker and heavier, but the about the same footprint as a knife as you guys can see here. All right, moving into the next and kind of final area of the EDC is firearms. First off, we have the spare magazine. So this is a, gosh, this is a 15, yes, the 15 round spare mag. And I carry this one just with, you know, a nine mil plus P hollow points in there. I believe these are 124 grainers. I think they're like a Winchester Defender, nothing too, too crazy. And yeah, so that's the spare magazine. And then of course we're rocking. And of course we're rocking for a handgun, the FN509C. I really like this one because of all my handguns uh, in the collection, the 509C is just the easiest to conceal, especially with this particular holster because this is a deep carry um, holster. So it really allows me to bury this gun so that I do not print it. And I think it's a little bit more important, especially in places like Anchorage, where it's just a more civilized place or, you know, um, maybe not civilized, but there's a lot more people. So if you're trying to conceal carry, you know, you have to be more mindful of all the additional eyes that are going to be on you at any given time. So that is the handgun of choice, the 509C. And of course, this one is running a 12 round, um, base capacity magazine and this one is or what's sitting in here are the extreme penetrators by um, lehigh defense and so this is an underwood ammo plus p loading and the reason why i've mentioned in other videos the reason why i choose that loading specifically for this gun like for my carry so the first you know 12 plus one rounds 
for the EDC gun are those extreme penetrators is just because of the sheer presence of black bears in Anchorage. And while luckily for the most part, black bears in Anchorage are most or are pretty much like just really big raccoons. They don't really, you know, like go around attacking people. There is still that like really high predominance of these animals are here. They could attack you. And so because of that presence, I like to have something in the gun that if I have to draw this thing, um, it's ready to rumble. And that's because a lot of times, you know, like I said, you can see a black bear literally just walking down the street, right? Like I've seen many videos of black bear cubs just walking down the street in downtown Anchorage, right? So it's not even so much that you have to be, you know, like out, you know, 40 miles into the wilderness, you know, and, and Fairbanks, where I was originally from, or where, I, you know, I originally was um, before relocating here, um, you know, there the bear presence was super low. So you'd have to really go out into the wilderness if you were going to see bears. And so at that point, you know, you would have a gun like a 44 mag uh, that's ready to rumble. But in this town, in the city, here in Anchorage, you know, you can definitely still run into black bears and stuff. So once again, the attacks are what I would say reasonably low, but still definitely something to be mindful of. So I like having those extreme penetrators for that little bit added, um, ability to like punch through thick hide, punch through bone scapulas and stuff like that. So I'm not going to sit here and say that the nine mil is, you know, the best thing to use on a black bear, but for those people that are saying like, oh, you should get a 10 mil or whatnot. What I do like is that with this package, it's very concealable, more concealable than a 10 mil, gives me more realistic capacity. And I'm still more concerned about two-legged predators than I am four-legged predators. So I like having the nine mil for the additional capacity and ease of concealment, as opposed to stepping up to the 10 mil. So anyways, guys, that has been a look at my Anchorage EDC. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully this makes sense. As always, God bless, and I'm out.